what's going on at quarterback? This is probably a question that a lot of Oregon fans or people in the Oregon football community are asking themselves after the past week of fall camp. You know, going into this, going into spring, really, it looked like Anthony Brown was the solidified number one quarterback uh, because he was the guy, only guy in the room who had any experience throwing at the college level. Obviously led a, a lot of offense, offensive production at Boston College and the ACC before getting to Eugene. Then we saw limited action from him last season, um, particularly in the USC game, the Pac-12 championship game, had some big plays for the Ducks, and then also in the Fiesta Bowl when he uh, was sharing time with Tyler Shuck. So the reason I wanted to hop into this video was to tackle this very question. Over the weekend, the Ducks held their second scrimmage of fall camp, and Mario Cristobal talked with reporters following that, and he had you know three questions regarding the quarterback position that I wanted to kind of hop in and, and use to address the situation here and shed some light on the topic. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go through the question, what his response was, and then shed some light uh, and give my two cents, my analysis uh, on the responses that we got. So let's start off here. One of the first questions he was asked, he was asked, you know, kind of what goes into the timeline for decision-making regarding the quarterbacks. First answer was, was very, short and sweet saying we're close, we're close with regard to making a decision about the quarterback. Um, and I thought that answer was uh, interesting because we didn't hear anything specifically um, regarding Anthony Brown. Uh, the staff has been telling us pretty much all throughout fall camp that uh, it's Anthony's job, Anthony Brown's job, but the freshman quarterbacks are, are looking really good as well. So that was the first one to, to start things off with, but we get into more detail as we go here. Second question Crystal Ball was asked was asked about separation among the three quarterbacks and if he has a good idea about who could be the team's number two. Again, implying that it looks like um, Anthony Brown is the number one guy right now. And this is a lengthy response, but like I said, I think it makes sense to, to bring it to light. I feel like they're all different. They separate themselves in different ways. None of them do something poorly. They excel at some things better than others. At the end of the day, it's about moving the chains and scoring points. We have enough in our offense where you can play differently with each one and not really come off the rails with the system. All in all, you're looking at three guys that have been pretty accurate that from a decision-making standpoint are lying in the 88 to 94% range. It's not good enough, but it's getting there. Very conscientious guys. They understand protection. Middle of the night last night, I hit Ty Thompson up, said, hey man, we're in this protection. You talk to me, you tell me who's got who and what do you have? And he sends back, you know, two page paragraph in detail. I thought I had him. Maybe he had the playbook beside him and he was cheating or something like that. Those guys, they take a lot of pride in that. Anthony's done a great job. Anthony had a really good day today. Talking about the scrimmage there. Ty had a good day. Butter had a good day. Robbie continues to get better and better. It's tight. It's one of those deals where, look, somebody's going to be disappointed at the end. That part, it's not fun, but it's real. If you look at it for what it is, every one of those quarterbacks should be enthused about their future because they all got a shot. They all got a shot to be the guy to be the guy that's competing against the guy. They're all right there. We did a really good job evaluating guys with high character that wanted to compete. We'll find out what we're about here in a little bit. So that was a pretty lengthy response, but it really, I think, sheds a lot of light on kind of the quarterback battle and the situation that the Ducks find themselves in. It sounds like it's really tightly contested right now. Um, again, you know, you're seeing that Ty Thompson is the the first quarterback mentioned after Anthony Brown to give you an idea of kind of someone who is looking like they're pushing Brown for uh, some playing time here on the Ducks offense. And um, I think that a little anecdote about uh, Ty Thompson, you know, talking about the protections that he's in and giving a really long detailed response. I think that says a lot about kind of how he's come along as far as developing uh, his understanding of the game. We saw him make plays in the spring game and the scrimmage. So obviously he's super physically gifted. The dude has a lot of zip on his passes and he, and he can move around in the pocket really well. But that processing of the game, that is such a huge part that I think people don't really take into account. And it's a huge reason why we rarely see true, true freshmen, literally fresh out of high school, starting in major college football. That's not to say Thompson can't do it. I'm just saying that's a huge part of the game, huge piece of the puzzle when you're when the staff is looking at who's going to be their starting quarterback come September 4th against Fresno State kind of flip that look at Anthony Brown. This is a guy who has years of playing college football. He has that experience. He, he knows how to process it. He knows how quickly the game moves. 
Um, and he knows, you know, a lot more about the, the mental aspect of things just because he has all that experience playing in the ACC at Boston College. And then even in the Oregon offense, even though it was limited, he still did get some time last year, like I was saying, against USC and Iowa State. Um, you know, wasn't the prettiest against Iowa State, but experienced nonetheless. So Crystal Ball talking about how it's tight and and in the day someone someone's going to be disappointed. So that looks like it's the competition is, you know, still very real and it's still going. So we're hearing good things about Butters as well, Jay Butterfield, and then Robbie Ashford continuing to get better and better as well. So uh, we'll find out here in a little bit, suggesting that a decision announcement of some sorts could be coming here in the near future. Excuse me, only less than two weeks until the season opener. And then the last question that he got asked is about the quarterback position was kind of what I was mentioning earlier, how coming into this in the spring, it looks like Anthony Brown was a clear cut number one. And then reporters asking, have those guys in reference to the freshmen closed the gap at all, or is Anthony still in a good spot? And this is what Cristobal had to say. They're all better. We feel if we played our quarterbacks that we're winning, we're going to win football games. Anthony continues to get better. Anthony allows himself to get pushed really hard. That's how we work here. And we don't cross the line of demeaning. We stay on demanding, demanding, demanding. Because we know that right now we're playing in front of an empty stadium soon. That thing is going to be filled up. We're going to go to places that are filled up, make a lot of noise, and make things difficult. So we have to create that type of duress, that type of pressure, and see what type of response we get by being very precise, very accurate, being very diligent with attention to detail that's unmatched. We can do that on a consistent basis, and that's how you create separation. There, in reference to the freshmen, they're getting there, but also Anthony's pushing ahead as well. As the gap closes, there's also a push on the other side. So you hear that and hear like Anthony Brown's making a good case for himself there as well. Uh, for people who listen to, uh, you know, press conferences pretty often, you're seeing a lot of coach speak here, right? You know, a lot not really tipping his cap. And, and why would he, right? You know, if you're in his situation, you're not going to tip your cap um, as far as, you know, which way you're leaning one way or the other for a couple of reasons, you know, when, when schools across the country have this kind of a decision to make all eyes are on them. Obviously every team in the PAC 12 is monitoring this really closely because Oregon's viewed as the top dog. So they want to know well, what kind of quarterback are we going to have to plan for when we have our biggest game on the schedule, which is likely Oregon, if not a rivalry game, PAC 12 championship game, potentially against the ducks. Um, and then the other part of that is if you're looking at this from a program standpoint, you want all your quarterbacks to feel like they have a good shot in this QB race. We all see, you know, what thing, how the transfer portal has transformed across college football, how quarterbacks, you know, they only have, they only have so much time and so much patience. I'm not saying that's the case at Oregon, but quarterbacks, sometimes they only have so much patience when it comes to competing. And if they don't get the job, you see how quickly people can move. And uh, the Ducks have a good situation here and that they're, they feel really good about their quarterback room. And we saw it in the spring game and in the scrimmage, there's a lot of capable guys here. So when it comes down to it, I really don't see anyone but Anthony Brown trotting out there for the first snaps against Fresno State. Even though we're hearing some rumblings here in fall camp, I still just don't see why the staff would not at least give him a shot. And a big part of that, I feel like, is because if you look at the skill position that the Ducks have now, this season, there's a ton of hype behind it, but to a degree, there's also some proven production there. you got awesome running backs, CJ Verdell and Travis Dye, who have been rock solid since they got to Oregon. You know, sure, there's been some fumbling issues there, but, you know, two of the better backs in the Pac-12 and nationally at that, you have some good receivers in Johnny Johnson and Jalen Red, proven production. Devin Williams broke out a little bit finally for the Ducks last year after getting here from USC, a couple hundred yard receiving performances. And then Micah Pittman. I think he's one of the wild cards of this group since he hasn't had a full season of college football where he's been healthy. And I feel like we, when we've seen him in the past, in past seasons, when he gets the ball and has a little bit of space, he, he kind of just turns into a running back in a receiver's body. And he has a lot of yards after catch ability as well. Uh, he caught a pass from Tyler Shuck, I believe against USC a couple years back and uh, took it um, and took it, took it for a touchdown. That was when Herbert was still here in uh, 19, I believe. So he's a big wild card, and we haven't even talked about the freshmen yet. All these freshman wide receivers come in, tons of more skill talent uh, being injected into that receiver room for Brian McClendon. Troy Franklin looking like he's probably going to be a starter here for the Ducks. You're looking at Troy Franklin, Mike Pittman, and Johnny Johnson, kind of looking like that first line. You got guys like Jalen Red as well, definitely worthy of a mention. 
Um, he's he's a big play kind of guy. And then you got Chris Hudson, who is he flashed the entire season last year, and he was rotating with Johnny Johnson a lot during the scrimmage that we were able to see a couple weeks back. So I say all that to say that the Ducks don't necessarily need Brown to be a superstar QB. They just need him to be smart, make good decisions. You know, as far as passing the ball, you don't want to turn it over. He had some problems with fumbles in the Fiesta Bowl. So you want him to take care of the ball, take care of his body. You know, he's he's definitely gotten some some praise for being a, a more mobile quarterback, a guy who's capable of making plays with his feet, but you don't want him taking hits and putting putting them at risk because let's say Brown is the quarterback and he gets hurt. You don't have a guy in that room that's throwing a college ball yet. So I feel like I'm beating that point to death quite a bit, but I think it's very relevant when you're talking about this quarterback position. And then the tight end position, you know, Patrick Herbert got injured, so the Ducks looking like they're going to be out him for a while, but you got Spencer Webb. Cam McCormick comes back as well. I think this is a big year for for everybody in the quarterback room. Sorry, the tight end room. And then you got DJ Johnson coming back, and he was a real force for this Ducks offense last year. So I th- and you haven't even mentioned the freshman tight ends yet, and you have a great offensive line. So I say all that to paint the picture. If the skill talent is as good as it looks on paper, it it's kind of a case similar to some of the more high power teams where you don't need a lot from your quarterback. I have a story up on Ducks Digest talking about that um, in my Taurus's take, what Oregon needs from their quarterback this year, whoever it ends up being. So we'll definitely keep an eye on this. This is one of the bigger stories to monitor as fall camp winds down and they kind of shift into uh, game mode with preparations for Fresno State expected to begin this week. But uh, we're still waiting for an official announcement on who's going to be QB1 for the Oregon Ducks come season.